So again, you are in the 3D 3A lab, uh, 3D uh, audio and applied acoustics lab at Princeton University. Um, well, here, my name is Edgar Schwery. I'm um, a researcher here. I'm a professor, and I do research on. Uh, I'm a physicist by training. I have a lab next door. I do research on space propulsion, but I also do research on audio. And this is my audio lab. These are my assistants, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this is uh, 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 Lars because he comes from Denmark, <laughs> uh, and uh, we have, uh, we don't have it here, we have Fritz who come from Germany, uh, but anyway, these dummy heads are very special because, um, I'm not going to disturb this one, hold it, it's centered, so I can put it back where it was, okay, this one has a realistic a pinna, uh, inside here there's an actual very good microphone made by uh, DPA, or BNK, which is the mother company of BNK, these are scientific mics, they are the same mics we use for measurements. Um, and these dummy heads allow us to uh, record and measure sound as humans hear it, which is essential for a lot of research in this lab. Uh, the way sounds interact with the given head and ears is called, uh, is it can be described numerically by a, a something called the HRTF, the head related transfer function. As I explained earlier in the anechoic chamber, uh, that's a very important uh, property of everybody's head. Mm. So the acoustic description, again, of your head, so to speak, uh, that is individualized. It's individual. F uh, uh, is, is, is very different for between indi individuals, unless the indiv individuals are perfect twins. Um, and that is like a fingerprint that uh, future technologies and even brand new technologies in 3D audio uh, and in virtual reality require it. Um, or they required to make the spatial audio even more realistic. Eventually, we are getting hopefully close to a point where virtual audio, 3D audio, will be indistinguishable from, from real uh, 3D audio space. Uh, and that is, uh, the HRTF is a key link in that, in that, uh, uh, in that goal, in, in, that, in that approach. Hmm. So um, what we are doing right now um, is measuring HRTFs. It takes, used to take two hours, now we can do it in 10 minutes. But still it requires, as you see from this anechoic chamber, pretty elaborate process and uh, instead we are looking and other researchers around the world are looking for techniques to obtain the HRTF without measurements by doing scans of your head or even maybe some photography of your head mm -hmm. and then from the scans uh, you analyze the data uh, and you, uh, today you can actually solve on a computer an equation called the wave equation or the kirchhoff helmholtz equation is also called, it will allow you to obtain the HRTF from your head without a measurement, but it's very time consuming. and requires very powerful computers, it takes a lot of time. So it's still not very uh, feasible. We, we're approaching, we, we're finding approach, we're trying to find approaches through research that will allow you to get the HRTF without fancy computers and without fancy equipment. So that's the, one of the main goals of, of one project. Uh, in this lab. So we are taking HRTFs of, of the visitors today, so Steve went first, mm -hmm. uh, and Jenna, who's behind the camera, volunteered to go second, and that measurement, once you take it, it stays the same, unless you change your head, for whatever reason. <laughs> so can you talk about some of the practical applications yes. of, of that research? So um, once you have an HRTF, um, you can then uh, synthesize sp uh, sound, and this is one application, mm -hmm. and uh, allow that particular listener whose HRTF you have to perceive it wherever you want in 3D space. As I will show you with our software, the Bach DSP software, you can then take sound and pan it anywhere in 3D space uh, artificially. Um, and uh, you can be assured that the listener is receiving the exact cues uh, he or she will receive if there was a real sound because the computer has that HRTF that we measured for you. So it's a, so it's a way of customizing uh, the playback system, uh, using computers of course, uh, to make you perceive the sound exactly where it was. So that's one application. <coughs> and uh, this can be um, through loudspeakers, not... Through loudspeakers or headphones? Yeah. Both. both. Uh, we usually it's through, the, through uh, um, headphones, but we have done a lot of research the past uh, seven, eight, ten years now on make, perfecting things for speakers. Mm. Uh, we, we have done under Sony uh, a lot of research for headphones. I will show you our headphones uh, technology that we, we patented recently. Six months ago we got this patent. But uh, we focused a lot on speakers in this lab. Um, so both headphones and speakers. Another application for HRTF is that um, you can 
What we can now do, again, this is still experimental, but we can do it. It hasn't translated into a product yet, but we can uh, record uh, a sound field using, well, first, to record a sound field accurately, um, played back, there are three different techniques. Uh, there's three approaches, so to speak. Two of them are related. One of them is called ambisonics, and one is called wave field synthesis. These are still mostly in research labs, um, but mo most all researchers in 3D audio know these techniques. Ambisonics, uh, wave field synthesis. The third one is called binaural, mm. uh, which has been around for a very long time. Only recently, binaural came out of age, I think, and to a point where not only it's on the same level, but in some instances, it has it's more much more practical and much more feasible than the other two. But the other two are um, wave field synthesis and ambisonics. Uh, both techniques rely on using many, many microphones and many, many speakers to recreate the 3D sound field. Um, there are a fancy way of imagining capturing sound waves in a lot, big uh, uh, area of space and re-broadcasting uh, re uh, this information from speakers. That's a caricature of these techniques, but in reality they use uh, much fancier, much smarter mathematics to um, recreate for example, the spherical waves from speakers, we, we construct them based on information recorded from an array of microphones in 3D space. Um, these have evolved a lot the past 20, 30 years. Um, and um, what, we, what we believe that from a point of view of consumer and also of, of virtual reality uh, and also of um, high-end audio, uh, people are not going to be close to putting 50 speakers in their home. Uh, and also from a recording point of view, it's hard to imagine, you know, this um, huge amount of 50, 60 amplifier preamps for 60, uh, 50 microphones and so on. Still, uh, so we, we believe that binaural approach uh, is worth perfecting and making better hmm. because it has the advantage of recording only on two channels. Um, so much of what we do here eventually boils down to uh, binaural audio. However, we use a high, uh, high aura ambisonics, which is a uh, this multi-channel technique, to record sound, uh, to to um, uh, process sound for our binaural rendering, and in the process we need the HRTF. So that's a long-winded answer to your question. Uh, you can. It turns out that right now to record 3D audio, and it's been known for many years, the best way is to take a dummy like this, take it to a concert hall, put it in the best seat in the house, and then record. In its ears. As a matter of fact, some uh, high-end um, audio labels, some audiophile audio labels, like the Chesky record label, uses exactly one of these. As a matter of fact, uh, we lend them their <laughs> the dummy head. We hand them Lars, and uh, and I'm a consultant for their record uh, label, and um, uh, I go to all the recordings, and they're beautifully, purely done, where we choose the best spot for the listener. We put the dummy head, calibrate the microphones purely. It's very pure. Um, MSP technology, you know, uh, that, um, A to Ds, and and uh, everything is recorded without any editing and so on. That is the best way to record an acoustic environment. Um, it, it turns out that there's an equalization required to make it playable over speakers, which um, makes it very pure over speakers, and it's called acoustic equalization. Until recently, people we were not aware of this, so people only thought of uh, dummy head recordings for headphones, but actually they're now compatible with speakers. So once you do that recording, you are now, you have a very good 3D image, but you are, it's only perfectly accurate if your head resembles exactly this dummy. <laughs> <laughs> this dummy is made, made such that the, the pinna are kind of generically average pinna, if you are from maybe Scandinavia. <laughs> and actually there's a paper in the literature from a Chinese, uh, uh, from a Chinese researcher, an academic researcher, demonstrating that the average Chinese head does not uh, match well is much further from the uh, 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 the d uh, dummy heads made in Europe. Uh, and there are two main dummy heads, this dummy head and the one d made by Neumann, uh, which is used mostly for recording. It's mostly used for research. And the Neumann KU100, that turns out is designed with average German head in mind. But in China, uh, the departure from the average are quite large, it turns out, mm -hmm. as, as claimed by this paper.